afternoon. Uh, my name is Sylvia, and I will be talking to you about two cool Angular tricks that hopefully you can use in future web apps when you're using Angular. The first is data visualizations in AngularJS, and then I'll be talking about using ng style. So here we go. Um, did you know that you can create data visualizations without using a library? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of you have heard or have played around with D3JS, um, which is data-driven documents. Um, very, very cool, very powerful library that helps you create dynamic and interactive charts. But what about those cases where you want to just create a simple bar chart? Personally, I wouldn't want to use D3JS for that, just because I might want to keep my app lightweight. So I will use the method that I will introduce to you in a second. Um, also, a lot of these libraries come with default styling. And if you want to get rid of it, it might be a bit of a pain. So if you just make your own chart, of course, it'll just inherit from your default styling. Um, it's quick. It's simple to use. Um, there's a little bit of a setup involved, but it's basic math. I have confidence all of you can handle it. Um, and once you get the hang of it, you have a reusable template that you can use over and over. So this idea was adapted from um, a um, blog post that I read on CSSTricks.com. So to have a simple example, very simple, um, sometimes when I have friends visiting me and they don't like the weather here, they're always like, you know, is it usually this cold in May or is it usually this hot in November? So let's create a chart for them. Um, this is data that I took from Wikipedia with the average high and low temperature in, um, I'm going to use Fahrenheit for New York City. So that's the data. Um, and now it's time to code a little bit. So I've taken the data, um, created a controller, and kind of just put all of that data onto the scope with labels. It's an array of objects where the label is the month and the value is the temperature. Um, I've set a width and a height for my chart as you can see here and labels for the y and the x-axis. I've also calculated the max value and we'll be using that shortly because we'll be setting every bar as a percentage of the max bar which should be the tallest bar of course. After doing these calculations um, you have the bar chart on this side. Um, so I have a title and um, set everything up with, so that the angular is working. There's a controller. Um, so this is where the chart <coughs> part begins. We are setting, we're creating a chart by making an unordered list where the width is, of course, the width that is um, declared in the controller. The height is obviously the height. This part is a little tricky. In order to create the y-axis, you're basically creating a div that has the width of the height, and you're going to kind of flip it on its head, so that becomes the y-axis. And then the x-axis is just the x-axis. And in order to create the bar, the height of every bar is that value divided by the max, and you multiply it by the height, so everything will be proportional. Um, the width will be the width divided by the number of data points there are, and you're going to minus five, so it creates a little padding between every bar, and the left value utilizes dollar index, which is an angular element. It starts at zero and increments at every loop, so at every bar it'll increase, and as a result, when you divide that number by the length of data points there are, multiply it by the width, it'll know how much it should move according to this bar. So every bar will be positioned correctly. And then I have a bar label. So just by doing this, you have a simple template. And now you will have a very simple bar chart. Um, just doing that. Um, it's very simple. And you can do the same thing for, um, instead of using bars, you can also use points instead, which I've done here. 
and then you will have a point plot. Um, I like this method. Um, it may not be the easiest thing if you want to create really advanced charts. There are some drawbacks to this method. Um, for example, there is a bit of setup. It wasn't too complicated, but th there is that. Um, it's slower because of the digests. Um, and it's a really basic chart if you wanted anything advanced, like these crazy things that come from D3JS, of course you would have to use that. Um, so yeah, hoping that maybe you guys can utilize this in the future if you just want something simple. Um, the next thing I will talk about is ng style. So we all know that we can do CSS styling inline. For example, that's just an example. But ng style is an Angular directive, and it allows you to set um, styling on HTML elements conditionally. So if you don't want the styling to be static, if you want it to be dynamic and change, you can use ng style. And what ng style is is that it accepts an object with um, CSS properties as keys and then val CSS values as the value. So it, it can either accept that object or a function that evaluates to an object. So just to show you an example, the first example I have is when ng style accepts an object. So in this thing that I've created, um, I have an ng controller. Oops, let's start that again. So you have a div that has as its ng controller color control. Um, and when you input something, this will just change the color of the text I have below it. Um, as we know, ng model um, places a variable on the scope with that input. Um, and I have a p element with um, the ng style that changes according to the color, which is on that scope. So for this object, I have font size as well, which is dictated by size on the scope. So on the scope, size is 22 pixels. Notice that I do not need the double curly brackets around this, this size. It just evaluates itself. And so font size is 22 pixels. And the color, I have it initially set to green. But any color that I place in here, this text will change dynamically. It can be anything. Of course, it could be a hex value. It can be just crazy colors like peach buff. Or, um, so yeah, that is interactive and will allow you to change things, possibly for user interaction. It can do backgrounds. Another thing is when ng style can take a function. So in this example, we have student control. And this is something that might be useful for a teacher, I suppose. Um, so you have student control, you have the students and their scores. And the p element takes its style from um, score color, which is a function that returns that styling. So troubled students will, of course, get a larger size. And um, great students will get a green color on them. So. In that way, you'll be able to have, like every element in, in ng repeat won't have the same exact static styling. And in this way, you can highlight different things. So these are two tricks that I wanted to teach you about Angular. So I hope you use them in the future.